All right, and we back on the forecast. Now, we have to understand, we have to start creating organizations for ourselves. We can't join a system designed to hurt us and hope to change it. It's not broken. It's working like it's supposed to. Black police officers enforce white supremacy. Until we're ready to recreate our own police force and actually enforce and protect our communities, then outsiders are going to continue to come in and harm us. And us protecting our children alone should be enough to make us want to get on code to do what we have to do. But some of us think we can change the system from within the system. The first black cop was appointed in 1878 in Boston. Horatio J. Homer was the first black cop ever. And that was during the beginning of the growth of Jim Crow. And of course, he had to face racism every day, but he couldn't exactly enforce the law on white citizens. And as a black cop today, do something that gets a little white kid hurt and see what happens to you. Or do something that gets a blonde white woman killed and see what happens to you. And then as soon as you take your uniform off, you're no different from the rest of us. Even sometimes with the uniform on. In St. Louis, a black cop, Milton Green, was shot by his fellow officers while he was outside of his own house. So let's see how a black cop could end up getting shot by his fellow police officers. Shirley, it was two years ago this Friday, police officer Milton Green was shot by a fellow officer, leaving him unable to return to work. Green says the city has been dragging its feet on the investigation, and now he's at risk of losing his home. The moment he was shot, everybody knew that he was shot by a fellow officer. In June of 2017, a chase involving St. Louis police and a stolen car came to an end near Park and Astra in the city's North Point neighborhood. St. Louis police said the suspects and officers exchanged gunfire. The lawsuit says three suspects inside the car got out and ran past the home of off-duty police officer Milton Green, who was in his driveway. One of the suspects pointed his gun at Green. Green drew his service weapon, identified himself as police, and told the suspect to drop his gun. The suspect ran. Uniformed officers arrived and ordered Green to drop his gun and get on the ground. Green complied, identified himself as an officer, and showed his badge. The lawsuit says a detective allowed Green to get up and told other officers Green was police. The suit alleges Green was giving the detective a description of the suspect when Officer Christopher Tanner arrived on the scene, shouted, drop your weapon, while simultaneously shooting Green in the arm. Green's family witnessed the incident. Green was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery. Anybody that kept into the emergency room, I told them what happened. My story never changed. It's not going to change then. It's not going to change now. I told them what happened. Yet that was not the story provided by the then interim police chief that night. An off-duty officer who lives in that area heard the commotion, came out of his house to render assistance, and during the exchange of gunfire, he was struck in his arm. Green says he has gone through six months of physical therapy. He has a plate from his elbow to his wrist and lasting effects. It's numb. It hurts. Uh, these two fingers, sometimes I get the shakes. I get shooting pains through it. He says he can't do simple tasks around the house and he can't do his job. Can't carry a gun. Can't, it's, I mean, tried to hold, to squeeze it. Can't squeeze it. Green became an officer to support his family and to make a difference in the community where he grew up. It was, if you just save one life that day, feel like you did your job, especially in the city of St. Louis. Now he's at risk of losing his home, and he isn't able to provide for his four children, who are still trying to make sense of what happened to their dad. I had my badge out, and they said, well, why did he still shoot you? And their trust is, it's, 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 it's rough, they're scared. Green's attorney, Javad Kazali, says the city's unwillingness to meet with Green left them with no other options than to file suit. And instead of taking responsibility and backing Officer Green, the city has abandoned him. The city says it does not comment on pending litigation. Two 17-year-olds were arrested with that original incident and two guns were recovered third suspect got away. Now, despite the police saying that these suspects were driving a stolen vehicle and fired multiple shots at police that night, the circuit attorney's office says the charges against the defendants were dismissed and the matter remains under investigation. So this brother Milton Green was outside his own home working on a car with his neighbor when somebody who was supposed to be involved in a police chase ran close to his home. 
So this brother, being a cop, pulled his gun and badge, and he yelled, drop your gun, get on the ground. But the guy took off running. So then the other cops who were in the chase saw this brother, Milton Green, and they told him to drop his gun and get on the ground. And he complied, he dropped his gun, he got on the ground, and he let them know he was a cop. And even though they weren't listening to him, there happened to be another cop there who knew him and vouched for him. So then while this brother, Milton Green, was standing there talking to the other cops with his badge out, all of a sudden, another cop, Christopher Tanner, pulled up on the scene, got out of his car, yelled, drop the gun, and shot at the same time. This man got out of his car, immediately shooting at this brother. Now, the police chief, Lawrence O'Toole, said he was shot during the shootout, and this brother was hit with friendly fire. But the police seemed to be the only one doing the shooting around this brother, Milton Green. They even arrested this brother, Milton Green's neighbor, who was just outside working on his car with him. And they still had him handcuffed even after Milton Green vouched for him. Now, although this brother, Milton Green, was only trying to help his fellow officers, to this day, they still haven't came to his defense or helped him at all. But the police do have their capes on for this cop, Christopher Tanner. Well, Milton Green was wounded in the right arm. His lawsuit says he's disabled and unable to return to duty. And he believes race is a factor, not only the night of the shooting, but how the department has handled the case. This is my right, right here. Officer Milton Green shows where the bullet entered his arm. He says he'll never be able to work the streets again as an officer. Sometimes they, it's numb. I get the shakes a lot with it. I get shooting pains. Two years ago, a stolen car crashed near Green's house. He was working with a neighbor on a car in the driveway at the time. Well, during a gun battle between police and teenage suspects, a fellow officer shot Green. Although Green had already interacted with other officers at the scene who knew he was with the department. I don't understand how I was shot due to me having my badge out, my gun straight down to the side, pointing down at the ground. It wasn't moving at all. The officer who shot Green is white. Green believes race was a factor in how the situation played out. His attorney says the neighbor that Green was with was also detained by police for several hours, even after Green vouched for him. Leads us to believe that, that race was a factor, that the cops targeted them because they were black and happened to be on the scene. A 13-page lawsuit says Green is drowning in bills and his home is nearing foreclosure. The St. Louis Police Department has declined to comment on the case, but the public safety director had this to say regarding the actions of the officer who shot Green. I'm, I'm always uh, disappointed when, when mistakes are made, uh, when uh, officers uh, uh, are uh, uh, alleged to have been reckless and careless. Uh, we don't know that yet. Now, Green says although he's still getting paid by the department, he can't get overtime or work secondary, which would bring in more money. The lawsuit also says as a result of the shooting, his marriage crumbled and he is now divorced. Now, this brother, Milton Green, is injured for life. He lost his job as a cop. He can't work no more. And he can't use his arms and hands like usual. But the police union, who usually finds a way to raise money for cops who shoot unarmed black people, didn't help this brother or speak up for this brother at all. The police still haven't even processed his pension because they're hiding his report. And this is not unusual. When you take off your uniform, and even sometimes when you still have your uniform on, you're seen just like the rest of us. In Prince George, Virginia, another brother who was a cop, Ja'Kai Colson, was shot by his fellow officers. So let's see how this brother ended up getting killed. A new chapter in the friendly fire death of a local police officer. Prince George's County Officer Ja'Kai Colson was shot and killed during a police station ambush. Only the bullet that killed Colson came from another officer. This happened in 2016 and more than two years later, Officer Colson's parents are still fighting. Today, their attorney officially announced a wrongful death lawsuit and Stephanie Ramirez just spoke to that attorney. Do we want our officers shooting at people that they cannot see. Frustrated at the investigation Thursday, an attorney for Ja'Kai Colson's family said his parents want the truth, transparency and accountability. The Colsons filed a lawsuit against Prince George's County and its officer Taylor Cross, the colleague who shot and killed Colson during the March 2016 ambush. As he's screaming, police, police, Officer Krause fires from a football field away. 
The lawsuit slammed Cross's actions as negligent on the day of the ambush. On March 13, 2016, police say Michael Ford opened fire on the county's police station while his brothers filmed from their car. Colson was a narcotics detective. He was in plain clothes when he drove up to the station and fired at Ford. Police say those heroic actions were what allowed officers to finally close in on the suspect. But in the midst of this, Officer Cross grabbed his service rifle. The lawsuit says he fired shots from behind a fence at some 35 to 80 yards away at someone who did not match the description for a heavy set black male in all black with dreads. We're not in a position that we're going to talk about race. I think this, these actions were reckless. The response? We believe that there has been 100% transparency. John Erzin, the spokesperson for the county state's attorney's office, says a grand jury reviewed all the evidence and decided not to file criminal charges. We're also told some officers may have believed there was more than one shooter. Erzin said someone will be held accountable. That someone is the suspect, Michael Ford. His trial is expected to begin October 22nd of this year. Outside of the Prince George's County Courthouse, Stephanie Ramirez, W, USA 9. Ford is facing life behind bars for Officer Colson's death. His two brothers already pleaded guilty, but their sentences will not be determined until after Ford's trial. Now, it started after a brother, Michael Ford, started shooting at the police station for some reason. Now, I don't know what the brother was going through while he was shooting at the cops, even though he never actually hit any cops. But this brother, Ja'Kai Colson, who was also a cop, put his life on the line and jumped in the line of fire. And other cops said his actions were heroic and he helped stop the shooting and allowed him to arrest his brother, Michael Ford. Then after the shooting had stopped for at least 30 seconds, and the suspect was already on the ground, unarmed. Another cop, Taylor Cross, saw his brother from 80 yards away and opened fire on him from behind the fence. This cop claimed he didn't see who he was shooting at, but he was still shooting anyway. Even though this brother, Ja'Kai Colson, a fellow cop, didn't fit the description of a heavyset black man with dreads, he did fit the description of being black. Now, the only person who was killed was his brother, Ja'Kai Colson, who was shot by his fellow officers. But they never charged or blamed this cop Taylor Cross at all. They blamed this brother Michael Ford for this cop's racial bias. And they said since he created a combat zone, they're going to charge him with this cop's murder instead of the person who actually killed him. And they added it to his charges and gave him 195 years. Now this cop Taylor Cross said he didn't have a police uniform on. He didn't get out the car with a police vest on. And as far as he concerned, he could have been another shooter. But somehow it's only certain cops out of uniform that get identified as the criminal, even surrounded by other cops who vouch for them and know their cops. But this is what happens when you enforce a system designed to hurt you. If you're going to put your life on the line, you might as well do it for something that will help you and your kids in the future. But we have to understand we are all we got. We don't have any friends. And once we realize that, and get on code, nothing will stop us. That's why they do everything to keep it from happening. But at the end of the day, we don't have any other choice. People start saying, get out of here, niggas. You know, get out of my neighborhood. Don't come Throwing to this neighborhood. Rocks. Then they start punching hitting on her. Throwing rocks and everything else. Throwing rocks. Because we were in their neighborhood. We went on a bike hike to McDonald's. We didn't, even, we didn't mean to bother anybody. We had a nice we time saw a parade. parade. We saw there. a gathering. So we went down there to see what was happening. All right. I mean, we didn't bother anybody. We weren't looking for trouble. I never even know people around here were like that. I've never experienced anything like this in my life. What happened to you? Nothing happened to me but this little boy, short boy about his, my size, a little short, had picked up a rock and he was in the front of all these tall honkies. But he, he threw the rock. He, he tried to hit my sister. 
messed up, but he almost hit me about that much away from me. And I was sure wish he had hit me with that rock. I would pick up the rock right next to me and hit him right in his face. They always say niggas are doing everything. We, they always say we're doing everything, right? We don't read it every time the white people come down the block. We don't push them out their neighborhood and throw rocks and start hitting them. We don't bother the white people around our neighborhood, but when we get in a white neighborhood, they they just push us so you out. Do them. Yeah, everybody, everybody with us, they say so we're nothing, you know, they we're a piece of dirt, dogs. I mean, that's the way you treat an animal. I mean, God, we're human beings. Yeah. You don't treat other people like that. It's just wrong. Black, why don't care? A person is a person. Skin should have no bearing on how you treat a person. That's just wrong. I hate that goddamn gut. I can't say that I hate them. I, I can't say that it's totally the kid's fault. I mean, I'm sure their parents had some bearing on the way they feel and everything else. I think it's just the system. I don't know. I can't say that I hate them because I don't hate them. Do you forgive them? No. No. Oh, no. Can't take back no hurt. But they go, they gonna always do that. They always spit on us like we some dogs. They always spit gonna back on them. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing gonna change. Darius Stewart says this image cut deep. It was like a Google map picture and it had like all the black kids faces on it and it said Negro Hill. It's an image with 25 black teams. It was circulating on social media created by two white Chaska High School students. Sophomore Darius Stewart is one of the 25 pictured. I was like shocked. I was like, wow, like they took the time of their day to do this. Darius said he found out in class soon after he and the other black kids pictured were summoned. They called all the black kids down to the office. Um, the dean and stuff, and they told us to uh, go in this room with the two, like, two of the boys that made it, and, uh, they made them apologize and stuff, and, like, ask us, do we have any questions, like, like, on why the kids made it. Leaving Darius with two questions. I said, like, what did we do to deserve this? I said, what was your intentions towards us? Uh, one of the kids said to try to be funny and stuff. Who's laughing? Some people might think it's funny, but me, I don't, I don't think it's funny. The sophomore is rarely left speechless but this blatant display of racism is different. In a statement, a district spokesperson said, quote, racism and bigotry have no place at Chaska High School, and the students responsible face significant consequences for their actions, including disciplinary action. Were they sent to detention, suspended, expelled? We don't know. The district says, quote, we can't discuss any specifics due to student privacy laws and the district hasn't been talking. This ain't the first time like something like this happened. In December, we spoke with a family who said their son's gym shirt was stolen from his locker and returned with the N-word written on it. In February, some Chaska students were accused of wearing blackface, taunting other black students on social media. And in 2018, the district made national headlines because students at a Chaska high school football game were accused of wearing blackface. What do you want the district to do moving forward? I want them to try to fix it and like stop this because like this is a big problem. And the teen who is rarely speechless. I don't think it's going to stop this. You're not hopeful. I mean, I am, but like, I don't think this like going to stop like this racism. racism. I don't think it's going to stop. Struggles to remain hopeful. Simple. Oh, me out You're here, on man. camera too, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, it don't matter. Oh. Record all day. Harass me out here because I walked through an alley. Mm, you walk through a yard. Come on, man, cut it out. Backyard. Verna! Come out here a second. You don't mind? Well, do you know this gentleman? Yeah, I know him. Okay, well, how do you know him? Because he comes here. He comes here? Okay, was he here today to see you? He was, he was, he was a few ago. And I was just leaving. I, I went let him in. You wouldn't let him in? Why not? Because I didn't want no boat in here. People, yeah, Did exactly. Did you want him in your backyard? I walked straight through there, bro. Like, you tripped out. Backyard. No, I wouldn't. I was walking straight through there, mama, like I usually do. The back gate, I guess. I yep. walking around because when I pulled through the back alley, <laughs> he was in the back door. You lying. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was walking straight through there, Mama. Anyway, we're in service. We have 14 and 4 school. 
They're picking vegetables? I was. You weren't outside when he was back there? No. No? I wasn't picking no vegetables out in the garden. We were in my <laughs> kitchen. Oh, okay, you're cutting vegetables. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is Abby still here right now? No, he gone. Don't worry, I don't know what happened. Baby, well, this ain't got nothing to do with him, though. <laughs> I'm talking to her. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm recording them. She's being unjustly harassed. Yep, because I show them. Mm -hmm. Walking through people's yards. And I told you, and I told you I was just walking through there because he wasn't here. Mm -hmm. he, he said he's here to see Ka Jennifer Castillo. No, I. You, you a damn Crystal. lie. He said what? Crystal. He's here to see Crystal. Even, what did you see? Yeah, you know Man, Crystal. you're making up names, bro. Crystal's the one you said. You making, it, you, you making up names like, huh? <laughs> no, Crystal. This nigga making up <laughs> names and shit. Y'all see this shit? <laughs> this nigga making up names on the front porch. <laughs> yeah, man, we should have went live on this one. Mm -hmm. All right, Brandon, I appreciate your time, okay? Okay, All right. Sir, you're free to go. Yeah, I know it. I know it. I don't, I don't have warrants. Free to go. That's me. Yeah. Look at this whole clown ass shit. Man. Come on, man. For now. Yeah, for now? Yeah. Always. Free. Yeah. Choose your route wisely. You say what now? Choose your route wisely. Do what now wisely? Yeah, I get out of that roadway because that's going to be. Do what wisely? wisely? Yeah. Ah, really, man? Damn, you ain't got to threaten me. Yeah. I ain't did nothing wrong to you. Right. Fuck, boys. The tables have turned. Watch these two young kids pull over police officers from Gainesville, Florida. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. <laughs> That's nine-year-old Ziana Oliphant on the right. You may remember, she's the girl from Charlotte, North Carolina, who brought the room to tears with her emotional plea during a city council meeting to bridge the police department's relationship with the community. And I guess the other words maybe. Got, it's a shame that our fathers and mothers are killed and we can't even see them anymore. Two months later in New York City, she met Gainesville police officer Bobby White while filming this campaign for Microsoft. There's a damaged relationship between America's youth and the American police officer. We're going to change that. White's the officer caught on dash cam video earlier in 2016 playing basketball with teens in the street after a neighbor called to complain they were making too much noise. Hey, that's a nice hoop. It was this moment seen all over the internet that pushed yeah. him to start the nonprofit called the Basketball Cop Foundation. What did that do? The organization works to build relationships between police and youth across the U.S. by holding events like this one. Ziana was flown to Florida to participate so she can be a role model for other children and how to have better ties with law enforcement. Hey, he's searching me! Playing sheriff to help close a divided gap. Get So the video you just see is of this um, police officer called um, Anthony L. Johnson. He goes around the neighborhood, uh, the Columbus neighborhood, and he dance and uh, play ball, ball with uh, black kids and black people. And uh, but as you can see, he play ball with you, and in the next minute, he punching someone in the face. So. We've been trying to tell our people that you can't be friends with the police because they have an obligation to arrest you, okay? Go ahead, go LeVar, ahead, before I, I get back to him. LeVar, can I switch gears with you? for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. <laughs> Let's stay oh focused Lord. here. All right. Um, 
I just wanted to first of all applaud you on how professional you were and how you handled everything yesterday uh, following the, the inappropriate comments. Thank I wanted you, to know you. if, um, has, has any of the Ball family members actually reached out to you? Has LeVar reached out to you at all to ap personally apologize? I haven't heard from anybody, but to be honest with you, I shut my phone off after work, yeah. so I was just in I was just in chill mode. Okay. Do you think uh, Lavar's going to be invited back on the show anytime soon? Should ESPN like just stop putting giving this guy airtime at this point, or? I have no idea. Those decisions are above my pay grade. Okay. Uh, can I just ask how Jalen is handled the situation? Does he have a message for Lavar at all? Do you have a message for Lavar? I think Jalen would have just liked if he had apologized to me publicly. Okay. ESPN obviously had your back. They said he was completely appropriate and let him be aware of that. Um, do you think that they should do anything further at this point, or are you satisfied with the outcome? No, I'm satisfied. Yeah, 100%. ESPN was really supportive, and I appreciate it. All the executives had my back, so okay. much appreciated. This past week, reportedly on ESPN, you were banned from all their platforms. I'm going to be banned, and I don't work for them. I, I gotta be banned from ESPN. I got my own show. Was your comment? What was your comment? I mean, when they could switch gears at any time. I mean, us, we didn't see it. I don't. I don't even have to respond to that on the fact that I meant no sexual intent or nothing on the fact that switch gears means change topics to me. Right, right. Her mind in the gutter if she thinking something else. Only time I hit on her if she breaking in my house and I'm mistaken for the boogeyman. Hey, I like it. And I just came from my house. Knock it off! Knock because she off. knows your fucking name. What's my name? Please just go back to the pool. You're drunk. She's drunk. Please record her. Record. Oh, don't touch me. Yo, just go. We're going back. We're going to Mary's right now. All I'm doing is taking a hamburger and soda over to a freaking lifeguard. So go right ahead. Yes. yes. Why are you bothering us? Yes. We're not doing nothing not, to you. Just standing you there came there up to us. Each other phones texting. And you just came and bothered us. Why are you doing this shit? Because a fly just went in my eye. What the fuck is your problem? Because I don't She's need crazy. no fucking gangs around here. There's no this gang. Bitch. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> that, that gangs works. around here. I got grandchildren. I don't need anybody hurting them. All right. You're crazy, man. You're drunk. I'm crazy. Yes. <laughs> I'm protective. You're, You're drunk. crazy. You don't, you should not go home. Don't watch no more TV. Yes. Do yes. not watch the news. Please she don't hit me. Smack. Yeah. <laughs> back up, man. <laughs> she goes what are you going to do to me? I'm not going to do shot. nothing. I'm not afraid. I'm not, I'm not afraid. Shot. I'm a school bus driver. Miss, I'm not afraid. That's good. That's good because for you. Because you know what? Miss that's good for you. Shot. I'm right here. Uh, I see you. Back up, man. Miss back up. Shot. Knock it off. Back up. Stay away from the Highlands. I live Please. in the Highlands. You live. I live in the Highlands. Where do you live in the Highlands? None of your business. <laughs> it's none of my business. Yes. But you think we 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 too we too black to be living over here? Please no, go. No, absolutely not. All right, so what's I the have problem? two grandchildren that are black. So All right, so why you why you keep messing with us? I'm asking you. Asking us what? Why are you giving me a problem? What you problem came up to us you, you and gave us a problem. Us. You started this whole you thing. You were posing you... for pictures. So what? And somebody keeps breaking the damn basketball net. All right. Did That's, you, did you we ask bought that net. Have you ever asked your neighbor Brian? Yeah, he'd be doing crazy have you stuff. Have asked him, Brian? You know he'd be shooting BB guns and shit. <laughs> Why do you ask us? Because we're black. You're on film. I'm on that. film doing what? Mm -hmm. What? You're the you one. Crazy ass. Go You're the one. Crazy. You Go to sure the pool. The one. Okay. And I'm telling lifeguard there's flies on that burger. Now I know. You want, yo, you want you need some Don't, base? Hey, listen to me right now. Stay away from me. You stay, stay away, away from, stay from us. us. You came up no. to us. Stay yeah. away from the pool. You I'm came up to us. Here, and I'd like to walk on the, the green belt. Stay oh my away. dick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I got a sniper trying to do my uh, license plate. We are, we here for the kids, but she um she trying to get us. She calling the tow truck, so talking about license plates for USP eight nine eight six. USP eight nine. Watch out. Got my son with me, and this was she on. It's in Charlottesville too. And Branch Lynn didn't have a problem with us parking here. She was just taking it amongst herself of being nasty with everybody and trying to get everybody car towed. But we're going to continue to enjoy ourselves at this lovely uh, carnival today.
She said she'll be here for when they come tow my car. Not knowing that when a tow truck come, I'm just going to pull away. For, uh, this phone is Leah Gant recorded the video after she claimed she was forced to leave the restaurant. Gant says it all started when a restaurant employee tried to force her to give up her seat for two white men on June 20th. When I did not get up for her to say, I am not going to serve you, and I had done nothing wrong. When she did not get up, Gant says the bartender told her she's not going to serve her and took her drink and dumped it in the sink. But Gant tells me things did not stop there. And she's yelling at me while I'm on the phone. Gant says shortly after another customer threw his food towards her, this part of the video shows Gant being escorted out of the restaurant. Monday, attorney Maurice Davis with the Davis Law Group announced another customer, J.L. Jefferson, claims he was also treated unfairly that night on his wedding anniversary when he asked about their food. At this point, an Arab gentleman from the uh, bar emerged using the N-word and told us to go home, ends go home. At that point, uh, management assisted with concealing this gentleman inside of J. Alexander to avoid police contact. J. Alexander provided this statement to Local 4. It says in part, we regret this incident occurred and extend our apology to our guest whose experience was interrupted by the inappropriate behavior of other guests. Now the statement did also mention that no employee here used racial or abusive racial slurs here towards any customer. They also mentioned that the employees here did not throw any food, but they did not elaborate on the employee mentioned that tossed out her drink. Now, police are investigating this case. They are looking for the customer involved. Organizers say it's the largest Juneteenth celebration in the nation, and it's right here in the Arklatex. And tonight, the mayor of Shreveport apologized to a very special guest. NBC6's Dominic Dillon has more. After more than a decade, the city of Shreveport is closing the chapter of a dark time in history. It is so wonderful to get a chance to come here and perform, especially after the way my father was treated. During the 33rd annual Let the Good Times Roll Festival, Mayor Adrian Perkins issued an apology and the keys to the city to the late Sam Cook's family for the unfair treatment Cook received while in Shreveport. With that very dark incident, there's a silver line into that cloud. Uh, after he left and got arrested here in Shreveport, it inspired him to write the song, A Change Is Gonna Come. In 1963, Cook performed in Shreveport. He made reservations at the Holiday Inn on North Market, but when he arrived, he and his family were turned away from being black. I'm just so honored that Mayor Perkins took out the time to do the apology while I was performing. In addition to the monumental moment, people also enjoyed unique food and artwork. This is the festival that celebrates the African American culture and sometimes we don't, you know, recognize it as much, but this is a very important festival because it reminds us of the heritage of the African American culture. The festival is hosted each year by Roe Omega and Friends to celebrate Juneteenth, a holiday that commemorates the emancipation of the last enslaved people in the United States. Former Vice President Joe Biden is facing backlash tonight after what he said, Congress needing to work together, the ability to work with others, but Biden citing segregationist senators as examples of people he's worked with in the past, calling them mean, but that he worked with them. 
his opponents pouncing tonight. And all of this comes just as the debate over reparations takes center stage on the Hill. Terry Moran in Washington. In a packed hearing room, an emotional debate. Should the federal government pay billions of dollars in reparations to African Americans who are descended from slaves as a way to make amends for the atrocity of American slavery? Slavery is the original sin. Slavery has never received an apology. This hearing, the first on the issue in a decade, actor Danny Glover and Democratic senator and presidential candidate Cory Booker making the case for reparations. But even before this hearing began, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell weighing in and sparking controversy. I don't think reparations for something that happened 150 years ago for whom none of us currently living are responsible is a good idea. Uh, we've, you know, tried to deal with our original sin of slavery by fighting a civil war, by passing uh, landmark civil rights legislation. Uh, we've elected an African-American president. That touched a nerve. Writer ta Coates firing back. For a century after the Civil War, black people were subjected to a relentless campaign of terror, a campaign that extended well into the lifetime of Majority Leader McConnell. This debate coming on the same day Vice President Joe Biden drew fire from fellow Democrats for his comments at a fundraiser last night, recalling a bygone era of civility in Washington. Biden spoke of two segregationist senators, saying of one Herman Talmadge of Georgia, one of the meanest guys I ever knew. You go down the list of all these guys. Well, guess what? At least there was some civility. We got things done. And Biden recalling the white supremacist Senator James O. Eastland of Mississippi. He never called me boy. He always called me son. Several of Biden's rivals in the campaign stunned by his comments, including Senator Kamala Harris. To coddle the reputations of segregationists, of people who, if they had their way, I would literally not be standing here as a member of the United States Senate, is, I think, um, it's just, it's misinformed and it's wrong. Terry Moran with us live in Washington tonight. And Terry, the Biden campaign now responding to this controversy? That's right, David. Biden campaign advisor Anita Dunn saying he wasn't praising those men. Quote, the point of the story is that you have to be able to work with people, even if they hold positions repugnant to you, in order to make some progress. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he's against slavery reparations. McConnell adding that the country has tried to wash away the sins of slavery by passing landmark civil rights legislation and by electing President Barack Obama. His comments coming as actor Danny Glover and activists are set to testify on the push for reparations before a House committee today. Trent Gilbreth, digital contributor with Atlanta and Company, in for Liza Lucas this morning. Trent, his comments are stirring up a lot of reaction online. Just tell us a few things that people are saying. That's right, Chiba. We're hearing from a lot of you uh, siding with Senator Majority Leader and some not against, against it completely. We heard from Christine who tweeted out, uh, we may not have the actions, but we owe it to try and repair what those before us have done. Now, we heard from a lot of you on the Morning Rush Facebook page. Uh, Richard commented, it's over, move on. We also heard from Brenda, we don't live in the past, make the future a better place. Why are they looking for the excuse? What is it about the Negro? I mean, every other group that came as an immigrant somehow, not easily, but somehow got around it. Is it just the fact that Negroes are black? That's a part of it, and growing, that grows out of something else. You can't thingify anything without depersonalizing that something. If you use something as a means to an end, at that moment you make it a thing and you depersonalize it. The fact is that the Negro was a slave in this country for 244 years. That act, uh, that was uh, a willful thing that was done. The Negro was brought here in chains, treated in very inhuman fashion. And this led to the thingification of the Negro. So he was not looked upon as a person. He was not looked upon as a human being with the same uh, status and worth as other human beings. And the other thing is that human beings cannot continue to do wrong without eventually uh, rationalizing that wrong. So slavery was justified morally, biologically, uh, theoretically, scientifically, everything else. And it seems to me that white America must see that no other ethnic group has been a slave on American soil. Uh, that is one thing that other immigrant groups haven't had to face. 
The other thing is that the color became a stigma. American society made the Negro's color a stigma. And uh, that can never be uh, overlooked. So I think these things are absolutely necessary. The other thing is that America freed the slaves in 19, I mean 1863 through the Emancipation Proclamation of Abraham Lincoln, but gave the slaves no land or nothing in reality, and as a matter of fact, to, to get started on. At the same time, America was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that there was a willingness to give the white peasants from Europe an economic base. And yet it refused to give its black peasants from Africa who came here involuntarily in chains and had worked free for 244 years any kind of economic base. And so emancipation for the Negro was really freedom to hunger. It was freedom uh, to the winds and rains of heaven. It was freedom without food to eat or land to cultivate, and therefore it was freedom and famine at the same time. And when white Americans tell the Negro to lift himself by his own bootstraps, they don't, o they don't look over the legacy of slavery and segregation. I believe we ought to do all we can and seek to lift ourselves by our own bootstraps. But uh, it's a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And many Negroes, by the thousands and millions, have been left bootless as a result of all of these years of oppression and as a result of a society that deliberately made his color a stigma and something worthless and degrading.